This video is the most pragmatic and the fastest way to run SQL with Python. In this video, we're going to build a console application to keep track of movies. An application that would, for example, be used at a place where you could rent movies. The database that we're going to use is SQLite 3 and that database comes pre-installed with Python 3. You will also learn how to work with DB Browser, a graphical user interface to manage your database. If you want to get the most out of this video, I really recommend that you build this application together with me because that's how you learn the most. Let's start right away. I'm going to start with creating the main loop. So I'm just going to make a loop while without a condition. And the only way to escape this loop is by pressing on a specific key. So first of all, I'm going to ask to make a choice. So I'm going to use input here, press A to add a movie, U to update a movie, D to delete, and L to show a list with all movies, like this. And based on your choice, we will then um, yeah, perform one of the use cases. So if choice is equal to, and I'm going to use capital A here, then I'm also going to ask a name for this video. So name is input. Please provide a name for the movie. And then I'm going to end with backslash N. And this will ensure that your input will start on a new line in the console. Here I'm going to do the same at backslash n. And I'm going to add the SQL queries for these choices later. And there is also another scenario. So I'm going to use an else if here. Else if choice is equal to u. So in this case, someone wants to update the movie or change the name. Then I'm going to ask for the ID. Input please provide the ID for the movie you want to update, backslash n. And I'm also going to ask for a new name. So, so in case someone wants to update the movie, we're going to select it by the ID, and then we're going to change the name. So we also need to know the new name. Name is equal to input, please provide a name for the movie. And I want a new name because we already have a name for the movie. Okay. Then there's another scenario where someone wants to delete the movie. A live choice is equal to D, capital D. And in that case, I'm just going to ask for the ID. So I'm just going to copy this one. I'm going to put it here. For the ID for the movie you want to delete. Then there is another scenario. Alef choice is equal to L. And in this case, we're going to provide a list of all the movies. So we don't need any input. We're just going to show all of them. Then I'm just going to print something here because otherwise I'm going to get an error. Print hello. And then I'm also going to add the else scenario. So in case someone presses a different key than the keys mentioned here above, in that case, we're just going to break the loop. And that's basically how we can escape uh, this um, infinite loop, okay? So this is basically the backbone of our application. I'm going to add all the SQL queries in the second phase of this video. But before, I'm going to show you how to design a database. SQLite 3 you don't have to install because it's a default library uh, part of Python 3. Um, what I'm going to install is the following. That's um, a DB browser for SQLite. Uh, so that's a program with a graphical user interface that allows us to design the database and also run some queries. So navigate to SQLite browser.org. You can find the link in the description. And then make sure that you download SQLite either for Windows or for Mac OS. Once you've installed SQLite 3, I'm going to navigate to this PC, Windows, um, Program Files. And then if you search on DB, you will find your DB browser for SQLite. This is the executable we need. So you can add, um, send it to your desktop and make it a, a shortcut here. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to open this program. So this is the program. And first of all, you cannot do anything without adding a database. And SQLite 3 stores your database in a local file. So I'm going to create a new database here. 
then you have to navigate to the folder where you want to store this database. And probably that's not in your program files. So I'm going to navigate to my project folder, which is this one. I'm going to create a new folder here that I call database. Uh, open it. And then I'm just going to call this database movies.db. Uh, Click on save. And then you will see that you can already start with creating a table. This table I'm also going to call uh, movies. And here you can add fields. The first field that I'm going to add is an ID. And for any table you're going to create in the future, you always want an ID, which is basically your unique identifier. This is always an integer. And you want to enable outer increment. So this will basically ensure that the first movie will ha have ID 1, the second one will have uh, ID 2. If you delete movie 2, the third movie is still going to have ID 3, etc., etc. And then you also want this ID to be unique because that's the entire ID of it. So I'm just going to click here and then I'm going to add another field and that's the name of the movie. And this needs to be of type text. For now, I'm just going to design this table um, to only have two columns, the ID and the name. But if you want, you can add more columns later. For example, maybe you can add a column mentioning um, to where you rented out a video or something. Okay. So for now, I'm just going to press an OK. I will see that the table movies has been created and has the following fields. Now, what's important is that you click on write changes in order to save your changes. And then we can return back to VS Code. Now in VS Code, I'm going to connect to the SQL database. So first of all, I'm going to import SQLite 3. And as I mentioned, this library should already be installed on your machine because it's part of default Python 3. And then I'm going to create a connection. So connection is equal to SQLite 3 dot connect. And here you have to provide the path uh, to your database file. So you see in my case, my database is saved in database slash movies.db. So first of all, I'm going to connect with database slash movies.db. Um, if that doesn't work for you, what you can do is just click here on reveal in file explorer properties. And then you can just provide the entire path to this database like like this okay so this will always work um, but it's maybe a more clean approach uh, to just do it like this so try this first then i'm also going to add the cursor so cursor is equal to connection dot cursor in case someone adds a video we want to add this video to the database and for that we need a sql query so i'm going to press cursor dot execute and this is the and this is the command that you use for any sql query and then between double quotation marks, I'm going to add the actual SQL query. So for adding data, that's insert into. And here you provide the name of the table. In this case, that's movies. Then you provide the, the columns that you want to add. And in this case, that's only name. So you just want to add the name of the movie. But let's imagine that you also want to, for example, add um, maybe the, the year when the movie was released. Um, then you do it like this. And then you're going to add the values. You also add the values between parentheses. And of course, you have to provide the same amount of values that you also provide here. So if you provide two arguments here, you also have to provide two arguments here. So for example, you can do one, two, three, and four, five, six. Um, something like this. Okay. Um, now I'm going to work with dynamic data. And for that, I'm going to use a question mark. And I will show you how this works. Of course, if you have two fields, you have to add two question marks. But for now, I only want to add one. So I'm going to remove the year. And I'm also going to remove the second question mark. Then to add the data, I'm going to create a variable here that I call a data. And that's because you always have to provide um, these arguments in a list. So even if you only have one argument, you have to add it in a list. Um, so I'm going to create a list here with only one instance. And that's name. Okay. And let's imagine that you also want to add, for example, a variable age. Then you have to do it like this. And then, of course, you have to add two arguments here and also two question marks here. For now, I'm going to remove age because it doesn't exist. And then I'm going to mention um, data here, which then um, includes the name. After we execute this query, we also have to commit it. And we're going to do that like this. Connection.commit. 
And we're basically going to use this same SQL query um, for all the other use cases as well. So for updating and deleting, but we're just going to uh, change the SQL query, which is only this part. For now, let's make sure that everything we have done until now is working. So I'm going to save this code and I'm going to run it. Press A to add a movie, U to update, etc. For now, of course, only A works. So I'm going to press A and press enter. Please provide a name for the movie. And the movie that I want to add, uh, let's add Harry Potter, press enter. And then again, you get these choices. So you can press A, U, D, etc. And of course, if we didn't have this um, um, never ending loop, then this program would just stop and we had to launch the program again. But for now, let's check whether this record has actually been added to the database. So I'm going to open the database here and then let's go to browse data. And now you see that a, a movie has been added with the name Harry Potter and the ID is just one. Um, let's try that again because I just want to make sure that um, if we add a second movie, it gets the ID too. So let's press an A again. Uh, please provide a name for the movie. And let's add then Harry Potter 2. Press enter. And you see that we now have one uh, Harry Potter movie and we also have a second one which name is a bit larger than this field, which is Harry Potter 2. Okay, so let's continue with building a script and also add the other actions like updating and deleting movies. So I'm just going to copy this part. Then let's navigate to the U action. For U, we uh, don't only need the name, we also need the um, ID. And I'm going to put it in this um, occurrence. So first we have the name and then we have the ID. And then I'm going to change this SQL query. Update movies, set name. And then this question mark is, is corresponding with the first argument, set name. But if you just do this, every movie um, will get the new name because you don't um, specify which movie you want to change. So I'm going to then um, add where ID is equal to question mark. And this question mark is then corresponding to the second um, instance uh, of this list. Um, let's just uh, save the script and let's run it again. And now I'm going to press the U. And the video that I want to change is um, uh, number two. Because remember that you have to select this video based on the ID. That's how we programmed this, uh, this program. Press enter. And I'm going to change the name of um, Harry Potter 2. Um, just see here that I forgot to uh, add um, the backslash n and that's why I'm now typing on the same line Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets okay press enter um, and let's check our data just refresh our data I see now that we have Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets this looks good and I forgot to add the backslash n where was that here and that's why I was typing um, here and there was now a new line. Okay, so the first one, adding a movie is working, um, updating a movie is also working. I'm just going to copy this one again. And then let's also make it possible to delete movies. Okay, for deleting movies, I don't need the name. There is also no name here because we haven't asked it. I just want to delete based on the ID. And then I'm going to say here, delete from movies where ID is equal to question mark and question mark, of course, is equal to ID. Let's also try this out. I'm going to press D and the video, the movie that I want to delete is, let's delete number one, press enter. And if I refresh the data, you will see that we only have Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets left because the first one has been deleted. Then um, what I want to do here when you press L is to provide a list of movies and that works a bit different. So I'm going to copy this one and I'm going to store it in results. So result is equal to cursor.execute um, and here I'm going to say select everything from movies and this um, star is basically you can also uh, mention the fields here for example name and id 
Um, but in, in most cases, this works the best because this way you just select all the fields, select everything from movies. Um, I don't need data here because I don't need inputs. But if you want to, for example, work with categories, um, then you can do something like this, select everything from movies where category is uh, one, for example, something like this, or of course a question mark. Um, but for now, I'm just going to select all movies and they will be stored in result. And I'm going to say movies is result dot fetch all. And then fetch all will basically give you back a list of all movies. And in that list, there is another list with all the attributes of movies. And I'm just going to show you how that works. So for movie in movies. So I'm now saying that I want to loop through movies and um, every specific single movie I'm going to call movie and then I'm going to say something like print movie zero and movie one and movie zero um, this is going to be the ID so this is an integer so I'm just going to convert it to a string so I can put it on the screen then also adds a dot, a dash, and uh, some spaces to make the format a bit better because this ID is uh, what we use to select our um, movies uh, if we want to delete or update them, for example. So let's try this out. Make sure that you save your script and let's run the script again. And in this case, I'm going to press L first. And I see um, that I have one movie, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. And uh, then let's press A. Let's add another movie and let's add uh, Oppenheimer. Let's add another movie, The Godfather. Press Enter, press L. And then you will see that we have now Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. We have Oppenheimer and we have The Godfather in our database. And I think if you want to learn SQL better, I really challenge you um, to expand this application with more use cases. So so maybe you also want to rent out videos and you want to store the date um, that you rent out a video, or maybe you want to store to whom you rented out a video. So I really encourage you to add all these other use cases. This is the way that you learn Python the best. And if you do so, please let me know in the comments how you expanded this application. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel.